Murphy. I'm with West Hartford Continuing Education with the West Hartford Public Schools and you are watching Tours by Lucy and the community television has given me an opportunity to share information to you about the trips we have coming up with Continuing Ed. We have a really thriving and vibrant program for the residents of our town. If you have not taken a trip with me, please feel free to check the catalog. Uh, it is sent to the homes at the beginning of the school season, and we are working on the catalog for the fall right now. So you'll be expecting them in your homes, you'll see them in your offices and your schools coming up. Uh, we are wrapping up our summer season. As a matter of fact, tomorrow we'll be bringing a group to Yankee Stadium to see the next chapter of the Red Sox-Yankee rivalry. So uh, that is an exciting end of the summer trip for me. And I'm really, really looking forward to the fall and the trips that we have coming up with the program. So I wanted to just share some information about the trips that we have and uh, the places that we go. We um, have an open registration for all towns, including West Hartford and the Farmington Valley. Valley and uh, you can register with our program on a regular basis. We also have courses that you can also sign up for, which are fantastic, languages, computers, fun things to do in your free time. Um, I, I love working with the town because there are so many services that there are available to keep busy uh, in town. And one of the things that I wanted to share was um, the program has allowed me to do pretty much all the trips that I've wanted to do. I've been with the town for 21 years, 21 years of really fun trips. And the way this happened is, you know, the, they say, you know, do what you love, create what you love. Well, I created these trips because of my love of travel. And I found a lot of folks over the years who have really uh, enjoyed coming with me. I have what I call my regulars for certain trips and they're welcome to bring their friends, their family, their neighbors, uh, we have a great time. So I really enjoy uh, the school system and enjoy doing everything with them. And so I wanted to just go into the dates that I have for the program. And uh, on September 30th, we'll be visiting Providence, Rhode Island, which is a wonderful little town, the smallest capital of the United States, which has an amazing event um, in the evening called Water Fire. And basically, it's a wonderful installation of music. Uh, there is everything from rap to ecclesiastical. They play wonderful music along the three rivers that converge in downtown Providence. Uh, they laid up, light up braziers, about 80 along the river, and they've gone to layers of glide through, and you listen to the music, and it's an absolutely great event. It's a very, very family-friendly event, uh, bring the kids. Uh, in the morning, what we do is we go to the Rhode Island School of Design Museum, which I consider a gem of a museum in New England. It is connected with the Rhode Island School of Design, and they have a guided tour for us that morning, and we will be able to uh, have a docent-led tour of the collection, and the collection is fabulous. They do a lot of modern art. They have textiles. They have everything from ancient history to Impressionism to modern history photography. Uh, they have an amazing staff there, which uh, keeps the exhibits fresh for the visitors every single time we come. So we really especially enjoy going to RISD. And that is our first thing we'll be doing when we go to Rhode Island. And then we're going to take a break for lunch. And we'll visit the Little Italy section of Providence. It's called Atwell's Avenue. And they have wonderful old bakeries old Italian bakeries back four or five generations. I especially love bringing folks to those family-run businesses that have been in the family for several years, for many years, and uh, taste their wonderful biscotti, their wonder wonderful solitelle, their cannoli. Um, you can bring home some wonderful Italian pastries and goodies. Uh, there are restaurants galore, which are wonderful and worth, worth visiting, old school Italian restaurants a wonderful shop called Venda Ravioli, which has all wonderful Italian products, artisan products. There's also a great store called Tony's Colonial, which you may do some shopping. And one of the greatest things about Atwell's Avenue is they have a wonderful pastry shop called Pastiche on Spruce Street, which has slices of cake, which are wonderful for dessert to take home. They are um, 
they are an amazing stop on this particular trip. So I hope you can come and explore Providence. There is time on your own during the water fire event to stroll the lovely downtown area, which has a wonderful, very walkable, very visitable. So that is something that we will do at the end of September. And in October, uh, we have been visiting on October 7th, on a Saturday, we'll be visiting the 9-11 Museum in New York City. Uh, a lot of trips that I do with the program are in New York City because there's so much to see and do there. And we've been visiting the 9-11 Museum and Memorial since they opened several years back. And we've had a good turnout. We have a good uh, you know, registration right now, but I'd urge you, uh, if you've not visited the museum, it is a fine tribute to that day. It is an important historical museum for those who live that day, who remember that day, and really to remember those who uh, perish that day to keep them in our memory. Uh, we have a admission uh, late morning, which will allow you plenty of time to visit the museum. They have artifacts uh, from the uh, Twin Towers. The memorial is built on the base of the Twin Towers. The two reflecting pools out on the memorial are actually the base of the Twin Towers. And you will remember that day, you will really um, have a good experience in this particular area. The area has been very built up since uh, the attack and it has changed a lot. There's a lot of businesses. It's a thriving, vibrant residential area. A lot of great shops, a new Oculus Mall, uh, opened nearby. Um, there is also an opportunity to visit the um, Trinity Church, which was uh, instrumental that day, and also St. Paul's Chapel, which has a memorial to those uh, first responders who uh, worked throughout the first six months to, uh, to clear the area. So there's good exhibits nearby that you might visit. Wall Street is nearby. Uh, Broadway is um, a really nice strollable area. There's shopping there. And uh, really the focus is on remembering that particular day and uh, really remembering those folks who, who were uh, involved that day. So that is the 9-11 Museum and Memorial. Uh, the next day we're returning to New York City for an event that uh, is an amazing event that has returned to New York City for the first time. Uh, in many years. I ran a trip years ago uh, to the New York Chocolate Show, which was at a different venue. This has been rehabbed uh, to another area. Uh, it's actually an old railroad station uh, out on 11th Avenue near the High Line. So it's a really new venue for us to have a trip. And what it is, is a chocolate show which will have artisan chocolatiers from all over the country. There will be workshops and seminars um, included in your admission. And what better thing to do to just taste chocolate all day long? I mean, it's wonderful. It's, it's an amazing event. And you learn about chocolate, everything from growing it, uh, harvesting it, creating the bean to the chocolate bar, and the history, which is a fascinating history of chocolate in, in the world from the slave trade and the production of chocolate, um, the creation of various companies who had chocolate uh, as their main product. And it's just a fun trip. Um, bring, the, bring the kids, uh, they'll enjoy the history. Uh, there is time on your own in the afternoon. There are several places nearby. You may have lunch. You can spend the entire day there. It is really geared towards you enjoying the trip. And also there are seminars and workshops there that you can sign up for when you register for the program, for the trip. Uh, we will share information about what is happening that day uh, that you can also uh, pay additionally for if you have an interest like in a wine and chocolate seminar or wine and cheese uh, seminar. I'm sure there'll be a, a nice uh, roster of seminars that you can you know, register for or attend that day. And also I understand you'll be able to buy chocolate. So it's, it's the, really a great return and great rejuvenation of something that uh, was a fabulous event and I hope will be a fabulous event and a yearly annual trip for us going forward. So chocolate, New York, wine and cheese, you can't do any better than that. Um, on November 3rd, we'll be visiting, this is my annual trip to the FDR home in Hyde Park, New York. Franklin Delano Roosevelt was our only four-term president. He grew up in Hyde Park, New York 
and there is a tour we are offering in the morning of Springwood, his family home. And also we will be visiting the Culinary Institute of America in High Park, which is just up the road. It is the finest cooking school in America, if not the world. And we have a reservation for lunch at the Caterina de Medici restaurant, a really nice Italian meal set in a villa all by itself right on the campus. And uh, you'll be able to visit their bakery, take some goodies home there too. And in the afternoon, we'll be visiting the museum at the grounds of the FDR home. And what it has entailed is a self-guided tour of their uh, speeches, the mementos, uh, the maps of, of the wars, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt's possessions. Uh, there is a room in the museum that you can listen to his fireside chats which is the pl first place that I head to when I go to the museum, is to head for the fireside chats. And it really is um, an amazing step back in history uh, to one of our most beloved president, if not one of our most important presidents who uh, guided us through the Depression, World War II, and uh, was our only four-term president. So there's a lot to see there. And the museum has been upgraded and updated to the 21st century. Um, on this annual journey we take, we've seen the revolution of, you know, the older museum transfer to the new museum. And it's, it's a great, great place to spend an afternoon. And the bookstore has wonderful uh, artifacts. It has wonderful souvenirs, books you may visit uh, and check through, take home. Uh, wonderful products from the Hudson River Valley, which is beautiful. And I think you'll really enjoy the history of our only four-term president. Uh, the next day on Saturday, we'll be returning to New York City to visit the Union Square Green Market in the morning. Um, I've created two foodie trips, and this is this, what I call the Further Foodie Finds Trip. And what we do is we visit the Green Market, and I give you some wonderful vendors that you may visit to buy up produce, fall produce, the place is just amazing. It's the largest and best green market in the city. The green market's all over, but this is really the granddaddy of all of them. And you can buy your Thanksgiving vegetables there. There is wine, cheese, meat, produce galore. Um, really a fantastic uh, range of products. And they run the green market several days a week. Uh, however, there are six states that the farmers come from to have uh, their produce sold here and the green market's been there for about 35 years so it's an amazing place to visit and to come home with great goodies and I also mention a couple of stores in the area that you may also visit during your time there and what we've done is we've created a a little bit of extra time at the green market for this particular fall trip so that you can visit these stores. There's Chelsea Market nearby. There's also a great Sicilian store called Agata and Valentina nearby that you may visit, and some great little, little stores that you may also visit on this particular morning and early afternoon. Then in the afternoon, we head to Little Italy in Chinatown, and there are some wonderful stores on Grand Street, which is the uh, old Italian, you know, five-generation grocery store called Apollo's that you may visit to buy your Italian specialties. And Lou DiPaolo is a, a famous Italian person in both America and in Italy. Uh, he is uh, a direct importer of fine Italian artisan products and has fresh cheeses, salumi, breads, olive oils, vinegars, polenta, you know, arborio rice, uh, all sorts of desserts uh, galore, prepared food, frozen food, fresh food. Uh, this is in a store that has an amazing wine store attached. And I remember from the history of coming to DePaulo's, it was a little hole-in-the-wall store where you could barely, you know, stand sideways. Um, you know, the line went out the door. It still does. It's so popular on Saturday that, you know, you take a number and wait patiently. And they're very, very good as far as Italian food education. They will give you samples. They will tell you all about the products and Lou visits Italy many times during the year and has direct 
uh, producing relationships back several generations with his fathers and his grandfathers. So uh, he really is the expert on Italian food in, in Little Italy. There's also another store called Oliva's. I call them the bookends. They're both on Grand Street between Mott and Mulberry. And you can visit both. Apollo's is really more the go-to store for, uh, for the goods. There's also Ferrara's next across the street that has wonderful cappuccino, wonderful Italian desserts. It's supposed to be the oldest Italian cafe in America, and it has a wonderful atmosphere. It is just a great place to stop. Also, Piemonte Ravioli on Grand Street is a great store that you may visit to get fresh and frozen ravioli, uh, wonderful pasta, uh, wonderful products, uh, very old school, very old fashioned. And also in Chinatown, there's a great store called Kaman, which is one of the largest Asian grocery stores on the East Coast. And they have products from all over Asia, including especially China. But uh, you can buy all of your utensils there, your cooking products, um, everything. Uh, they have prepared food, they have duck. I also mentioned during my trip, there's also a wonderful uh, few restaurants that I return to on a regular basis, which are they're Vietnamese, Chinese, Japanese, Italian. So I give you a full roster. There is time on your own to have lunch um, in this area. So there's you're close to Katz's and the Lower East Side. There's several neighborhoods that converge around Grand Street, which are Lower East Side, the Little Italy, and Soho, which are very visitable. And you're you're close to Dean and DeLuca's, and you know in Soho that is very visitable also. So you can visit that. I just discovered also nearby a wonderful Canadian Jewish deli with wonderful smoked meats, Montreal style, which I've shared with my passengers and they've really gone and enjoyed that. So that's a little, few blocks up. But there's also um, a new market in Chinatown, which is a self-enclosed, uh, very visible market. They have uh, fresh produce. They have all the meats, the duck, um, really wonderful uh, dim sum restaurants called, uh, there's one called Golden Unicorn, which is fabulous to visit. Uh, we have had groups come on previous trips to go directly to, to Golden Unicorn and uh, really very much enjoyed it. There's also a Buddhist temple on Canal Street, which is a really great place to spend a few peaceful, calm and serene moments in the middle of busily hustling, bustling Chinatown and uh, I recommend that as a visit that day. So uh, you can get in some shopping, get in something to eat, visit the temple, which, is, uh, which has tours and uh, has, has constant activity and is a very, uh, very enjoyable visit. So that is something we'll do um, in November. Um, on November 23rd, we are returning to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And what we do is we leave very early in the morning to get situated very well at the parade. We leave at a crazy early time, 5 a.m., to get to the Plaza Hotel at 7 and drop you off. And the parade is one block over. And what they do is they head up 6th Avenue. And uh, there's some prime viewing spots along 6th Avenue and Central Park West and Central Park South uh, that you can situate yourself. It's a great family event. Um, they have tons of celebrities, marching bands. Um, they have wonderful musicians who play throughout the route. And we, uh, we leave about a half hour after the parade. So it give you a chance to put your turkey in the oven, go to the parade, come back and enjoy a meal with your family. So we've been, really been blessed with some wonderful weather days for the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And um, you know this year I expect no different. So if you have an opportunity to do that, I believe this year is the 90th anniversary of the parade. And so it's, it, it has a million visitors. Um, it is televised uh, through, I think, NBC. However, being there is much, much different, very enriching experience to see all the fun that day. And they do a great job uh, organizing it, putting it together, and offering it to you that day. So please do come. Uh, we usually get fair pretty full buses for that because it's a really great family event and it's worth worth it to go into the city. There are places that you can have a bite to eat before the parade that I mentioned to you, of course. Um, practical nitty gritty matters that, you know, you can, you know, take care of that day. So that is on Thanksgiving. Um, and in December, I have my annual day on your own. 
Um, it is uh, the first Saturday of December, December 2nd. And what we do is we leave um, and come back at a extended time. We come back at nine o'clock. So we'll give you an opportunity to see a Broadway show, uh, see the Radio City show, um, shop till you drop. Um, it is the time, uh, it's the busiest shopping day in Manhattan in the entire year. And so we uh, really enjoy the day and people scatter and go to museums and do uh, some terrific visiting that day. And uh, it's a really terrific event. All the lights, uh, the Rockefeller tree is up and lit. And also the windows um, of all the stores are decorated for the holidays. And really that is a year round endeavor for, for the stores mm -hmm. to plan and have the, you know, have the show, uh, have the windows really beautifully decorated. So that is something that you can do that day. Um, so the last trip is my 17th annual trip to the Radio City Holiday Show. And what we do is we have wonderful orchestra seats for you. Uh, we sit in very good sections and we go on a weekday for the best possible seat, the best possible prices for you. That is um, a day that you can plan to take your family. Um, it's a wonderful event. If you've never seen it, I've had folks who were seven years old who have been, never been, who have taken uh, their first trip and really enjoyed it tremendously. Uh, what they do is they change the skits about every couple of years or so. They update it, upgrade it, and they have the nativity scene at the end, Santa, uh, the skit with the two children, which is fabulous, and the Rockettes. They change their tunes um, every so often. Uh, they have some of the classics, but really it is an amazing event um, in New York, and uh, you should come. It really is fantastic. There is time on your own prior to the performance to have lunch. Um, they give you a lot of good possibilities in the area of all different price ranges. Uh, so if you'd like to pop into a museum for an hour, uh, have lunch uh, before the show, you can do that. We return directly right after the show to come home. So that is a, my last trip for this year. We are busy planning for 2018 now as we speak. And one of the trips that I will be offering next year is um, Brooklyn is a very happening place. And uh, we had several years back a walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. I'll be offering a trip um, in the spring to uh, walk across the Br Brooklyn Bridge, including a tour of the neighborhoods. So if you haven't visited Brooklyn, please do. We have other things on the drawing board that we um, will be offering, uh, possibly um, a Broadway show, uh, more days on your own, and uh, in Boston, we generally do this in the spring, so please look forward to that. And I wanted to just share my uh, email with you in case you'd like to contact me about that. It is toursbydesign at gmail.com. It's T-O-U-R-S-B-Y-D-E-S-I-G-N at gmail.com. And again, my name is Lucy Ochaki. The last name is spelled O-C-H-O-C-K-I. And uh, you can also call the program at 860-561-6900 to register to find out more information. And I will also give you my cell number, which you can reach me at any time, which is 860-305-8762. Please feel free to call me with any questions whatsoever. And I also get suggestions from you about places you like to go, uh, such as museums, historic sites, um, events that are coming up. We're always on the lookout. so please feel free to drop me a line if you find a particular event that you are particularly interested in because I'm not only love to travel, I love to do the planning, I love to do the research, and we are always looking for new and exciting things to offer you. So uh, if it's a day trip um, and it is doable, we will certainly do it because the program has been fantastic uh, as far as letting me do things that will be enjoyable to you know the folks who sign up with the town and uh, I appreciate very much their uh, their time and their hard work in registering you and I also want to give you the website it's www.whlifelearn.org slash course catalog that is where you will find the trips uh, you can go online just google it and it'll take you right to the page with all the information about the trips and I'd be happy to send you out any information about the trips. If you want a flyer, I'd be happy to send it to you. 
and we will uh, take care of registering you. Our uh, staff is always uh, very eager to assist you in uh, the best possible experience. So I thank you for taking the time to listen to this and hope to see you. I wish everyone uh, a great beginning of fall and hope to see you on these trips and beyond. And I thank West Hartford Community Television for taping this show. I appreciate all of their hard work, the folks who are here, uh, very, very amazing folks. So thank you very much, and I'll see you at the next show.